SK Vibe Maker, Rinse FM, Rinse TV, Shy FX in the building. Yes. Not everyday conversation. Trust, I don't talk much. <laughs> Manager's looking at me over here like, <laughs> is he all right? What's happening? I know, obviously, yeah. shy by name, shy by nature, you know, from so the awkward beginnings in school and stuff. Yeah. But sometimes you got to talk, though. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> I'm rather different in music, but, you know. Straight. So you're yeah. definitely, like, um, a lab rat. Like, I assume, like, when you said that you was up until 5 a.m. last night, you was in the studio, well, maybe? That was insomnia, but... <laughs> oh, straight yeah. up. You suffer from insomnia Yeah, yeah, badly. But, um... Yeah, most of the time I'm I'm in the studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like you work best in like um, in the AM, early hours, or doesn't matter? Um, three thirty for me in the morning. That's when magic seems to happen. Um, but yeah, just just whenever. I mean, I'm I'm stuck in there. You know, mm-hmm. um, I only come out to to see my missus. You know what I mean? But Straight up. You know. So I assume like with the shyness, um, I find it quite interesting about studio sessions. You mm. say that you work in the early AMs. I can't imagine there's um, many people in the studio <laughs> with you. Is it usually uh, like a solo studio session when yeah, you're so when making and stuff? When I'm creating and making the beats and experimenting, and that's when I do the, the late thing. But, you know, obviously during the day is a time where I do the collabs and stuff. I mean, you're definitely versatile. How much fear is there, though, sometimes when you're like, I've been mad experimental <laughs> in the studio. I'm about to release this new sound. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you tweak it to make it a bit more similar to what maybe people might be accustomed nah, to? Man. Yeah. No, 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 How no, much no, fear no. is there? Um, again, I'm a junglist, isn't it? So <laughs> <laughs> our whole thing was just pushing it in this. I, uh, when I started making jungle, all the man them around me was like, what are you making this devil music for? Because at that time it was um, bashment and and um, hip hop and whatever else, and a lot of people didn't understand what that was. And my thing is, if my peers at the time couldn't tell me nothing, nobody can tell me nothing. So I go in the studio, I just do me, mm-hmm. and um, hopefully it aligns with what people want to hear. But if mm-hmm. it doesn't, you know, they catch the next wave in it. It's just I can't stand still and I can't really be caught up in what other people mm-hmm. think of what. I do what I love. Do you know what I mean? It's, that makes no sense to me. It's a great thing that you're still out here, very relevant. A lot of your peers from when you started out, I don't know, many of them aren't here anymore. Who's your soundboard that you kind of bounce off and ask for advice these days? Maybe That's your elder. Is there, is there an elder or? Um, you know what? There's a guy called Potential Bad Boy who was one of my mentors back in the day. And um, he's a guy that, yeah, I always plus play music and whatnot. I mean, mm. to be fair, he hears everything. You know, just there's a lot of times I just make tunes just for making tunes sake. I don't play them out. I just, you know, it's just to mm. um, get vibes out, out out of my system. And yeah, we we have these listening sessions where we just skank around listening to music and whatnot. And fortunately, as well, in the, my studio complex, there's um, everyone's there from Chase and State mm-hmm. to. Um, Benji B, Mike Watson used to be there. Um, next door is Lily Allen and, and Meridian Dan, Sub Focus. I mean, we're always just playing music and, and just mm-hmm. vibing. And vibes and yeah. And so we just played um, We Don't Care. And it's funny because I think the, the last time we spoke, um, I kind of joked about it and I, I can't remember how you responded, but I said, um, you know, anyone hearing that song in 2017 and then hearing like your old, you know, catalogue of like Wolf would have yeah. never imagined that the producer <laughs> yourself produce both of those songs yeah you know what i mean the the dynamics do you remember the point in which you said that like uh, i'm gonna kind of change because like i feel like a lot of your early discography was definitely more drum and bass jungle yeah, yeah yeah and then there was a point in which you said you know what i'm just gonna change and experiment but, and do but other even, things even then i was making hip-hop reggae and all sorts just not under my name do you mm-hmm. know what i mean there's there's loads of stuff out there you know that i produced that you know kept people don't know you yeah 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 you had some secret aliases a world of them <laughs> you know what I mean I, I, I'll speak about them off mic and then you'd be like okay cool I, I see wow. what I'm going do you know what I mean so why, why though why yeah. why the secret alias and not like in those early days why not just have it I was, I was trying to build my name and you know even now you know what I mean people don't like when they can't really put you in a in a place you know what I mean mm-hmm. even though I don't like to you know I definitely remember you saying that you had been speaking on the phone with Miss Dynamite about a possibility of you lot working on a project together. Mm. And I think the the music that I hear with you and Miss Dynamite just sounds like you're meant to work together. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Is there yeah. any development on a, a possible Shy FX Miss Dynamite project? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Maybe exclusive. Mm. <laughs> There's stuff happening. Possibly, <laughs> yeah. 
there's stuff happening. I mean, no, you know, we're always working. Yeah, let's work that way. Is she one of your favorite collaborators? I assume she is, right? Yeah, and not just for um, the music, but just as a person. She's just such a blessed mm. person. You know what I mean, it's just a positive energy. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it's amazing. You know what I mean, um, I thought I'd ask you some of your favorite collaborations um, today. I know, aside <laughs> from Miss Dynamite, and yeah. there's been a load of them. <laughs> Mm. And you know, I don't want people to get upset, but this is just your opinion on how you're feeling today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's usually the latest one. Um, I'm just thinking who I can I'm allowed to say I've been in the studio with. Um, one of the recent ones was Koji and Getz. Then the, you know, working with Getz is always mm-hmm. a madness. You know what I mean? He's mm-hmm. um, extremely talented. I've never seen anything like it. Koji is. Man, that dude, he's just so, he's a, a creative and, and it's, a, it's a so mad with him, you know, from the singing to the characters to, this is, yeah, just his character. Mm, um, the poetic side. That's what I mean. Um, working with him was, um, again, it didn't even matter about the music. It was just about the process of creating was, was, was mad. And mm. I learned quite a lot from that session, actually. Mm. Yeah, Do yeah. you have a wish list? They're gonna be on this forthcoming sound tape, so um, yeah. When you see the the sound tape that comes out, you'll see what the wish list was. And the fact that it's called a sound tape, you understand? You know what I mean, <laughs> a sound tape. There's a yeah, lot man. to be read from that. Like mm-hmm. um, you know, old school people that were into like you know the dance or culture and stuff would yeah. definitely know what a sound tape is. Right. So what does a shy effect sound tape sound like? Well, that's my thing. So I was thinking about doing an album. I was like, oh, I'm not sure. I wanted something that had the excitement of a mixtape. And then I was thinking, well, what's my interpretation of a mixtape? And sound tape, man, to sound man, do you know what I mean? And when you hear it all put together, the way it's all tied together and the interludes and the story, it's, mm-hmm. you'll get what it is, do you know what I mean? Um, loads of references to the whole sound tape, sound man era. I remember you saying that um, at a point that you was very influenced by the G-Funk West Coast sound. The Dre's and whatnot would always do these epic interludes. And mm. uh, um, yeah, I thought it'd be sick to have a, a UK version of that. Now, there are some big fans out there of yours mm. that maybe have a vinyl collection. They're fortunate to have a vinyl collection and have a lot of your old school catalog mm. on vinyl mm. but you know there's digital fans as well that aren't able to get <laughs> the vinyl catalog and a <laughs> lot of your old school stuff yeah. isn't online it's yeah. not there and i remember you saying before that um you couldn't relocate the masters or something mm. like that you lost the masters yeah now i thought i'd take this opportunity <laughs> today to ask you have you relocated <laughs> the old school discography masters yet i found a lot of people are i found about 90 percent of the deaths oh for really so um to say for for that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean um, there's a couple of tunes that I couldn't, so I've actually just rebuilt them and try to keep as close to the originals as, as possible. Mm. Rebuilt? Yeah, so I still, that? it's long, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, and some of it as well, um, this one called um, Pandora's Box, and I found the original samples to that. Um, but the, the keys for samples is out of key. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's just a the whole different scale or whatever. Mm-hmm. At the time, it sounded sick. Now, trying to recreate that, knowing that it's just wrong. Yeah. I, it was a difficult, I was like, oh, do I do this, do I not? You couldn't I, go back to your primitive ways. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a bit <laughs> of a man. I, I did it anyway, just, you know, just to keep it true to the original, but it felt really uncomfortable, trust. Mm. So the latest single, Call Me, with Maverick Sabre. Yes. How did this come together then? Yeah, again, it's part of this sound tape, Ragamuffin, and I wanted to set it off with... Um, something that uh, just gave me that feel good old school vibe but you know I could still play my set um, and I mean as soon as I made it I knew that I wanted Mav on it that's, that's, you know, that, um, and yeah he came into the studio heard the vibe just caught it straight away and yeah it was a go um, but what I'm trying to do is you know there's there's Full on, I've got full on like I'm gonna say mosh music, but I don't make mosh <laughs> music. I hate people moshing, but Wild you know, out music. There you go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I thought let me just start it off on on a nice, smooth, mature, mm-hmm. the kind of music that I would definitely, if I weren't making music, I would still go out of my way to to go to a party that was playing this kind of music. Mm. If that makes any sense. 